this time I'd like to call to order the March 12, 2008 Planning Commission meeting. Let the record show that Mr. Alan Krause is absent. All other commissioners are present. This time I'll, uh, well, I'd like to make an announcement. We will not be discussing the AC Rodrigue Estates tracks G1, G2, and G3. That family partition has been pulled from our agenda. So if there is anyone here that tonight to speak on this property, we will not be discussing it this evening at this meeting. Um, we do have an amended agenda, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the amended agenda. If there's no other, if anybody else has any items of new business, we can go ahead and add that at this time. Too. Motion to accept the amended agenda. I have a motion to accept the amended Second. agenda by Sherry Slime and seconded by Don Grant. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Uh, acceptance of the minutes of the February 13th, 2008 meeting. I'll entertain a motion. I have a motion to accept by Ms. Second. Beverly Barre. Seconded by whom? Paige Becknell. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Item four, public comment period. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on any item that is not on the agenda, please come up, sign in with the secretary, and you'll get your three minutes to speak. Mr. Martinez, I believe you had, uh, had told staff or someone that you wished to, uh, you had a few comments for the commission this evening. Mr. Chairman, members, uh, just want to let you know we've uh, ended our searches for the planning director. We uh, plan on presenting uh, a person tomorrow night who we feel is highly qualified, has 11 years experience in planning, currently resides in Florida, and I hope he's not getting the Julio. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we feel he's very, very qualified. We look forward to him coming aboard. Uh, we think he'll do an excellent job. As I said, he's got 11 years experience in planning and urban planning, and I think this is going to help us out and help you out as a group and uh, have some stability there for a change. And so we're looking forward to it. Hopefully get him approved tomorrow night. He'll probably be three weeks before he'll come over. He's going to give a three weeks notice if confirmed. So I just wanted to make that announcement to you. And uh, I do have his resume here. I will leave it here. And if you all want to look at it, I think he's met with Mr. Becknell uh, and Mr. Brock. And hopefully this clears it up. And we're also going to continue looking for an urban planner. And just to give you a little update on the loop, uh, I have addressed the loop committee about uh, talking to you as a group. And before any decision is made on a route, uh, we certainly want our planning commission involved in the uh, event that they have subdivisions in a proposed route that have been, uh, that you, you have approved and doesn't show on a map. But, uh, you know, I want Ascension Parish's planning commission to be involved in this process also. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. We appreciate your, uh, your, the information that you provided us this evening. Uh, does anyone have any questions for our parish president this time? Thank you. So moving along, uh, public hearing for granting approval to the following family partitions. Of course, 5A has been pulled from our agenda. 5B, the Edna West property, lots D-1, D-2, and D-3. James Falgo representing the following family partition, asking the commission for approval. Comments or questions from commissioners? Hi, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, uh, I have some questions, but I, I just want to refrain until uh, we hear the public comments. So I'll wait until afterwards. 
Anyone else? Any comments or questions? And then I, I have one question. Um, lot. I'm not sure. I guess it's uh. All right, see lot D1. Mm -hmm. There is a servitude. And then there's nothing connecting it to the next servitude. On the previous plats for this division, it was existing. So okay. we have to show existing. The, the new plat of this has lot D-1-8, <coughs> B, and C on the east side of the property line with a 15-foot drainage servitude going all the way down to the drainage ditch in the back. Okay. So it was existing, so we have I to show understand. existing servitudes. Where does that does that lot flow towards? I would say it's kind of like a hump, and it kind of some most of it goes to the front, but towards okay. the back of lot D dash one dash A, everything starts draining to the back. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? And at this time, we'll go ahead and open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this property, please sign in with the secretary and you will get your three minutes to speak. Right here, sir. My name, you read? Yes, sir. My name is Alan West. Can I use your map? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm one of the owners. It might be lot B1. Uh, C West A. Alan S. West. Can't read a lot. It's not very vivid. Uh, lay, it, oh. lay it down on the machine right there. From oh, here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Where well, the pin is pointed? There. Okay. Whatever lot is this, this is where my existing house is. And the property was 16 acres all told. We subdivided into three lots previously. And yesterday was the first time we seen this map, and they got me down at the back of D1C, which is here, and uh, I oppose this development. Uh, I have a barn and horses on the property right now, and I would like for my property to, do, to be adjacent to where I'm living instead of, uh, I'd have to come out and go all the way around here to get to the property. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. No. no, no, no. I'm with you, but go no. ahead. Sure. Okay, so uh, I mean, I think it should be a way that you could get it. Where, where's your house? Right here, where the pen is right now. Okay. okay. Where are your Where's your Where are your horses? Well, the horses is over everything right now. It's, it's not subdivided. <laughs> you know, the whole 13 point whatever acres plus. Well, I have a barn right behind my house. So I would like for my property to be adjacent to that and come on straight, you know, divided this way. And this is the first time I'm seeing this. I don't have, I didn't agree to, you know, this map being put well, out. Or who, who owns those lots? Who owns those three big lots that you're, you're pointing to at the bottom there? Okay. That's uh, Deborah Jackson. I see it here. Okay. Uh, Lillian Burns and D Lot 1A, which is right here. And I am here. What's okay. your What's your relationship between the three of you? Sisters, brother. Okay. Who decided on the configuration of this receptacle? That's the question I would like to know. I saw this map yesterday. After receiving your letter, you know, come to say come down to be here. <coughs> and I went to the planning commission and I got a letter. Uh, I mean, a part of the map. So like, uh, and then I noticed down at the bottom of it, it says this is done for Edna West. She is deceased and been deceased over 10 years. So who authorized to do this? 
and where did they get the approval? I didn't give mine. Okay, sir. We'll, well, uh, there's some other people I see that want to speak too. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and give everybody a chance to to say what they have to. And maybe we can find out. Chairman. My name is Charles Byrne Jr. I'm a grandson of Edna West uh, Estate. My mother, Leon West, is the testamentary executrix over the remaining 13 acres of Edna West property. She has total control on what she, what she has to do to get the heirs in possession of the remaining of the property. Uh, What we are asking that we get approval to put the rest of the heirs in possession of the remaining of Edna West property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can I ask how many heirs there are that are going to get property? Three. Three. Okay. Three names on the plot. Okay. Is there anyone else that would wish to come up and address the commission? Okay, ma'am, please come in, sign up with the secretary. Deborah Mildred West Jackson, and I'm one of the heirs. I'm a daughter of Edna West. I've never seen this, and I didn't know nothing about it. I know some things going on, but I didn't see any papers until I got a registered letter one day this week. So I don't know who authorized Charles Lee or who to take possession because the last day in the West was at my house, which was my mother. She called me Deborah. She said, Deborah, Leon took me to Gonzalez and had me to sign something, and I don't know what it was. I said, well, Mama, you ought to sign your life. She said, well, I don't know. But she did tell me that. That's all I have to say right now. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chairman, can I yes. make a recommendation? I suggest since this is a litigated succession that the parties go resolve the matter in court and then come back to us to approve the succession. Okay. okay. Mr. Falgo? Any, anything else you'd like to add? Well, I mean, I think we'd have to take the suggestion of the parish attorney. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the commission? Okay, then the public hearing portion is closed. <coughs> Comments or questions from commissioners? <coughs> James, I was going to ask you a, whole, you a whole bunch of questions, but I think I, I'll defer. I think what yeah, I'm going to do is we need to defer for ma make a motion that you um, um, If, if we deny it, well, that's the alternative. Yeah, I think we, it, unless you unless you ask for a deferral, yeah, we're going to have to deny it. But uh, O'Neill, I want I want to be clear. Well, that, that's, no, what, that's why I'm asking. That's why, asking. That's why unless he asks to be deferred in, you know, until it's resolved in court. Yeah, it was reserved to <sighs> defer to its result. Well, that's okay. That and that's what I want to. Yeah. Okay, I'm a, I, I, at the request of the petitioner, I'll make a motion to defer until such time as they resolve the litigation. Which case the matter will be re advertised and re agended. I have a motion to defer by Julio Dumas. Second. Second by Paige Becknell. Is there any opposition or discussion? 
Motion passes. Item 5C, the Ronald P. Frederick property, tracks B-1-A and B-1-B. Item 5B, the Ronald P. Frederick Good evening, Clint Clinton Mall, representing W.J. Clinton Mall Surveyors. As for Planning Commission approval of the following family partition, track B1 into B1A and B1B, we had no comments from the consulting agency nor the planning department. Any comments or questions from commissioners at this time? not then we'll open up the public hearing anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this property please sign in with the secretary and you'll get your three minutes to speak no one wishes to speak so the public comment period is closed comments or questions from commissioners lot two to the north and lot b1a actually owned by the same ronald p frederick that is correct um, Ronald's, uh, Mr. Frederick, and Mr. Babin uh, own almost the entire track at one time, all the way to Bayou University. And this is um, essentially one big, large pond. That is correct. Is there a um is there an earth moving operation going out of there? Or is it just a lake, just a just a water body? It's just, it's just a pond. Um, just a big, nice pond. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second that. I have a motion to approve by Sherry Sliman, seconded by Julio Dumas. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passed. Item 6, public hearing for granting preliminary approval to the following subdivision, 6A West Ridge. Good evening. My name is Neil Angelette. I'm the engineer for this project. Um, the proposed development, West Ridge subdivision, is um, located along West Lane and LA 930. It's a 58 lot uh, single family residential development located on approximately 24 acres of property. We have allocated green space along both entrances along West Lane and Louisiana Highway 930, as well as a uh, green space on the southeast corner of the property near the pond. Um, we're requesting preliminary approval tonight. Comments or questions from commissioners? Then, if there are no comments or questions from commissioners at this time, we'll open up the public hearing. Anyone wishing to come up and address the commission on this property, please sign in with the secretary and you'll get your three minutes to speak. And no one wishes to speak, so the public comment period is closed. Comments, questions from commissioners? On mine, it says the preliminary subdivision plot that uh, required the front building setback line be 25 feet on the property. And I. Mr. Don? They've changed it, I see. We, I've got, we got the second it. one. Yeah, you yeah. saw it? Okay. only other thing that I didn't I wasn't sure was addressed was the utilities being switched do you know if those were that was a comment from staff I'm, I'm not sure that, that that's been changed on this plot but we we have received that comment and, okay. and intend to do that okay any other comments or questions from commissioners I've got a question on the sewage. Where is it? 
going to and what's it tying into? The, the proposed sewage is going to be along West Lane, the, the tri both the treatment plant and the lift station. Um, this was an item that was uh, was requested of us in the, the preliminary committee uh, meeting, and it was to help facilitate any future developments that that may happen with community sewage in that area. West Lane is a substandard road, correct? It's only a 30-foot right away. That's correct. It's a 30-foot right away. I think it's... Um, I think you need to make sure that your your sewer plant is set back far enough to accommodate any any future right of way expansion. In other words, it would have to meet setbacks from from a potential thirty foot a sixty foot uh, right of way rather than a thirty foot right of way. Okay. Yes, sir. And I think we do have enough green space there to do that, so we will um, we will be sure that that does happen. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? And what is the wish of the commission? I'll make a motion to approve subject to the uh, um, applicant uh, correcting the, um, the sewer issue with the cross section. Also, um, that the um, construction of the sewer treatment plant be set back uh, an additional 20 feet from the existing right of way to accommodate future right of way expansion. Yes, I opened up the okay. public hearing and no one spoke. Okay, I have a motion to approve with condition by Julio Dumas. I'll second. Second by Paige Becknell. Is there any opposition or discussion? Motion passes. Thank you. Item 7, public meeting for granting approval to the following simple divisions of property with a variance. 7A, the Addis Smith property, lots X-1 and X-2. Ellen Jackson with McLean and Associates. There were a couple of comments. They have been addressed and we're asking for your approval. The comments or questions from commissioners? Comments or questions from commissioners? And what is the wish of the commission? It's up for public meeting, not public hearing. It's okay. You know, you left this little piece right here. A little piece. So you left a little piece between X2 and lot A. You okay. leave that in lot X1. Mm -hmm. My concern over those other remaining 12 acres is that, um, you know, you have ingress and egress to, to X1 from 928. And by carving out X2, you also have this other secondary point of ingress and egress, which is a substandard access way. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, I'd like to see you have X2 contiguous to lot A so that, you know, 
in the future when you do something with X1, you have to gain access from 928 because that's not going to be, that's not going to work. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, but they wanted an acre right there. Well, they would still have an extra piece of land over there, Julio. They could use, if they shifted X2. Yeah, you're right. Never mind. If you moved it over. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I just know it's going to come back as a subdivision. You're going to try to use that access. It's going to be a problem. I withdraw my comment. I'll make a motion to approve. I would make a substitute motion to approve, but um, with no further subdivision of the property. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Julio Dumas and a substitute motion to approve with condition by Sherry Sliman. I second the substitute motion. I have a second by Paige Becknell on the substitute motion. Is there a second on the original motion? Yes. Okay, I have a second on the original motion by Don Grant. So we will vote on the substitute motion first. I think that's backwards. I think you would vote on the original motion that got the second, and if it passes, then that's it. Well, we can do it that way, too, but I think it is a substitute motion that you vote on first. I'm not going to, the night's too short to argue the point, so we'll vote on the original motion first, and then the substitute motion if necessary. Let's go ahead and do a roll count vote just to make sure. Mr. Don this is the yes. original motion. Ms. Beth Bauer? Against. Mr. Julio Dumas? For. Mrs. Steve Barra? Against. Ms. Betty Beth Against. No. So the original motion fails. We'll now vote on the substitute motion. Mr. Don Grant? Yes. Mr. Bell, right? <coughs> Mr. Julio Dumas? Against. Mr. Steve Bell? For. Mr. Paige Beckman? Yes. Mr. Sherry Sutton? Yes. So the substitute motion passes. Item 7B, the Melvin Holmes property, lots 4-8-1 through 4-8-5. Ellen Jackson with McLean and Associates. There is one comment. It has been addressed. Asking for your approval. Comments or questions from commissioners? My only comment would be that for five lots, you're supposed to have a 50-foot certitude of passage. It's 50. And I you know on one one lot, there's only 40 oh, well, feet. They, have, they should have sent out the revised flats. You've got 50 feet all the way? Yes. Oh, well, our map doesn't show that. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have the revised comment. Charles, do you have that map? No. It, it shows in here the the comment from CSRS is that they corrected the uh, to show 50 foot. We have the mobile home crossing the. Correct. That's what I you know. The servitude of passage and showing it as 40 feet on lot 4A2. Well, we've got the letter I'll that says you corrected it. Okay. So. Well, we don't have the map. Right. No, we don't have the corrected map. Do okay. Do we want to accept new material? Well, that's. 
Well, just let me, let me, let me ask him. Oh, I know. I was going to, I was going to, I was going to say. Do you have it, Charles? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, then mm-hmm. do we want to accept a new plan? That's a, well, go ahead and let we, the commission we vote. We, we decide would. we would vote on you know, a case-by-case basis whether or not we want to accept material make, that was... What are we going to do with the trailer? I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept on the basis that staff distributed an incorrect map in the letter from CSRS clearly states that the plan was corrected to show it. Well, Ellen, would you put yours under the machine? Sir? Okay. Okay, I have a motion Second. to accept the uh, document to documentation presented by Julio Dumas, seconded by Steve Barrow. Is there any opposition? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, but then the mobile home is still in the servitude. Yes, the client has agreed to move it outside of the servitude. So, it when? Will be moved. When? When? Before construction of the road. Will staff inspect this road? It's a private servitude. Staff will inspect it. Okay. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? I'll make a motion to approve subject to a condition that the mobile home be relocated in such a way as to meet the required setbacks from lot 4A2 prior to final inspection of the um, home drive. I have a motion to approve with condition by Julio Dumas. Is there a second? And the motion dies for lack of a second. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? Meet the minimum size? Yes. <coughs> and this is this is all uh, the majority of this is crossroad commercial, right? Charles, mm-hmm. the zoning? Crossroads commercial all around. The district boundary line is about the last four. Right, so seventy five percent is crossroads commercial. And they're asking for uh, aggregate surface. What is the wish of the commission? Does the property owner own any uh, adjacent property? No. So there's a variance on this still, though, because there's a, we don't have enough frontage for yeah. each lot on That's a public right. street.
Leo, I would, if you would restate your motion, I would second it. I, I made a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Julio Dumas, seconded by Sherry Sliman. Is there any opposition or discussion? I have one nay, Steve Barrow. Motion passes. Thank you. Item 8, committee reports, subdivision ordinance committee. We met. I don't have anything to report back, and we will not meet in, what is this, March? We will not meet March this month. Uh, strategic planning committee, which I don't think they have met yet. O'Neill, would you know? I don't know. Okay. Item nine, new business. Any items of new business commissioners would like to discuss with the, the full commission? Okay, no items of new business. Item 10, old business. 10A, Commerce Center. Good evening. Uh, my name is Eric Erickson with Evans Graves Engineers. We're the engineer on the project. Uh, Commerce Center is a 24 lot commercial subdivision approved um, sometime in 2007. We're nearing the completion of construction right now. Uh, one of the requirements for final inspection and therefore final plat was to construct some improvements along Airline Highway. Uh, at that time, we agreed to them. We did construction plans for it. We selected a contractor and we're just about to build the improvements when DOTD came to us and said, hold up, we want to change the whole plan on Airline Highway. So that being said, we have cooperated with DOTD and have agreed to make those improvements um, in a new set of plans, which we're trying to expedite as quick as we can. But in the process, it's going to delay the commercial subdivision, the final plan of, that, of the commercial subdivision. So we would ask that that requirement of off-site improvements be removed, but yet you will still be able to hold the development to the improvements by reducing the number of certificate of occupancies that we are requesting. So it allows the developer to sell his lots, but yet no traffic will be generated uh, until the new improvements are made. Is this more improvements or less improvements? It's more improvements. O'Neill. Yes. Can you post a bond? We have made that we don't allow bonding anymore. <laughs> but if we had that provision, we could allow a bond. We don't, yeah, but we don't have it. Yeah, we did away with the by ordinance. You can't bond a subdivision. Can you bond off site improvements? This is part of the subdivision. Looking for a way out here, O'Neill. <laughs> Well, it, it, uh, and I understand. Didn't you come before us when DOTD made put requirements on this development? Came before this commission to ask us to amend our motion to um, include DOTD. Uh, and it seems to me that when we did that, we kind of took ourselves out of it as far as anything DOTD would put on you. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's, this is between you and DOTD. Which is fine. So and I'm kind of curious. I mean, what kind of time frame are we looking at here? I mean, okay, you, you got your approval from DOTD, and then just all of a sudden they came back? Or, yeah. you know? That's correct. We had approvals back probably in midsummer for our improvements that we we're going to do. Um, and then in, in February, at the beginning of February, they came to us and said, a new development across the street <laughs> is coming online, which requires us to change our turn lanes and signal modifications. Okay. Wait a minute. You had your approval from them midsummer, and now we're talking about February. That's not one day, a day after or a week after. We're talking about six months. Well, we had the original go-ahead. And we, were, we did plans, we were ready for construction in February of the original 
requirements. And then we get a phone call in February saying, don't build what you've just been designing and we permitted, we're gonna build something else. And as far as time frame goes, we're estimating a construction completion in the subdivision at the, at the end of April. With the new design and the new construction of the airline improvements, those will probably drag on until June, July. So it's about a three month gap that we would be basically dead in the water, not able to fill our lots until the airline improvements are made. Are you talking about June, July of 08? Yes. So suppose we just put a time constraint on it of, of September 30th of 08. Did you have to have them done by September 30th of 08? I think we could definitely do that. And that way we don't, we don't, we have something that's trackable and manageable by staff rather than figuring out which lots you can get a certificate of occupancy, which ones you can't. That'd be wonderful. We'll take that. Staff, is that suitable with you guys? They're still at the mercy of DOTD, though, aren't they? I mean, I'm well, not sure. Again, that's why I was thinking if he's, if he's thinking July, we'll give him to September and gives him plenty of time if for whatever reason DOTD delays him or if the weather gives him plenty of time to come back here administratively and ask for an extension. Right. And we, we have been working all along with DOTD. They've, in fact, already approved our conceptual new design, if you will. So we are in the process now of redoing the construction plans. So we are headed in the right direction. It's just going to be a, about a three-month gap between the subdivision and the, and the outside improvements being completed. I am the OQD. I don't know if I have permission to speak, so I didn't want to interrupt. Please come up, sir. Uh, I'm Ronnie Carter. I'm the district traffic operations engineer for the department. And uh, this really, this problem was not anybody's fault. It's just the system. And, and what, what we run into a lot of times with permits is the problem that you never know what's coming next and you approve one thing and then something else pops up next door. In this case, CVS developed on the uh, southeast quadrant of LA-42 and Airline. And then Commerce Center came up next on the opposite side of Airline and they wanted to uh, get an approach to the signal, a signalized driveway. So we approved that and everything was fine. And then this third developer decided he wanted to develop to the south of, of CVS, on the same side as CVS, but immediately to the south adjacent. And they wanted to use CVS's driveway. And uh, which I thought there were, was advantage of them using that driveway. But the CVS, CVS had built a left turn lane on airline that was that was really short, and at the time that left turn lane was only going to serve CVS. But however, with the third developer, that was going to add some additional traffic in the turn lane. So, what I'd previously approved was a uh, longer northbound left turn lane for the Commerce center with a very short substandard <coughs> previously approved left turn lane for CVS. So there were a couple of things I wanted to do. One was lengthen the shorter one and shorten the long one. And the other was to offset them so that when you have turn lanes that are contiguous with through lanes, you end up having a sight distance problem. If somebody pulls in each turn lane, they're both blocking each other's sight. So I wanted to offset them with the additional volumes to minimize that problem. That, the problem is more problematic the more volume you have in the turn lane. And initially, when I approved the first one, there was only CVS. And then when Commerce Center came along, I could have made, made them offset them, but then they would have had to go back and offset CVS's, which didn't seem fair. And I thought when there was only the CVS traffic that thought we could live with it not being offset, but when this third developer came on the, in the picture, I thought that was enough to throw it over to where we really needed to offset them. And, and it is advantageous, I think, to have that turn lane serve the third developer. So it's just kind of a catch-22 type of a problem, and we're just trying to make the best of a bad situation. If we had known the whole thing from the beginning, 
we could have laid it out that way originally, but that's that's the problem that we run into on a regular basis. And I don't know, I probably confused the heck out of y'all. <laughs> no, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm good, but let me ask you a question. Uh, from a permitting perspective, not a constructability, from a permitting perspective, you know, September 30th is a realistic time, or it's October 30th, the better realistic They'll time. have to answer that more more so than okay. me. But I, my perception is yes, but they're in a better position now. Okay. Well, I've got a question for you, Mr. Parr. They go ahead and they get under construction. Somebody else comes in. Are they going to? Are we gonna we gonna do this all over again after they've started construction? No, because their frontage is long enough that anybody else coming in is gonna be far enough down where I just won't allow them to attach to that property. And in this particular case, if I didn't allow these guys to attach to CVS, that was gonna throw in more left turning traffic from airline to forty two, which already is horrendous. And so that was the advantage of allowing. I mean, I could have not allowed them right. to tie to CVS, but I really think it's in y'all, Ascension Parish's interest to do that and the department. So, so I really thought this was the best of all solutions. I knew when I called them, you know, I'd already approved their permit. So I was just saying, pretty pleased. You think, can, can we work together? And they've been very gracious to work with me. And I'd also written a, a letter to Tommy Martin as uh, requesting that they be allowed to, to do this. And I don't remember exactly the contents of the letter, but okay. if, we, if we could all work together on this. Okay. Any other comments or questions from commissioners? No, I understand, but I, I'd, I'd like to take a stab at the motion and rely on you to help me make sure I, I refer to the right condition, okay? But. Um, <coughs> I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion to approve an amendment to the condition requiring improvements to airline highway to um, state that the, that the required DOTD improvements on airline highway, or excuse me, the approved DOTD improvements to airline highway be, be completed prior to September 30th, 2008. I have a motion to approve. A second. By Julio Dumas, seconded by Sherry Sliman. Is there any opposition or discussion? Are you? Come on. Is he okay with that? Yeah. No, that's the order. for you? <laughs> we, we would like as much time as possible, obviously, but the line has to be drawn somewhere. Um, well, except that, you know, you, you understand well, you have no restrictions on lots or anything like that. You yeah, that's the one thing we want to make clear is we can file the you final file plat. file your plat. You just have a time now out there, and if you're not going to get it done by September 30th, then you need to come back and ask for an extension. We'll agree with that. Well, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Item 11, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oof. I have a motion by Julio Dumas, seconded by Paige Becknell. Any opposition or discussion? Motion passes, and we will reconvene in 10 minutes as a zoning commission.